Man, so many beautiful people. It's nice. Uh, so my name is Anton. I'm, I'm the guy from the napkins you've maybe seen. I know it's, it's weird, but yeah. And I want to talk about how to run tests in hundreds of different environments really fast. And the really fast in the title is like the key point, so keep this in mind for later. But first, uh, what I have to maintain. So we have an open source library called Sentry SDK. And we have around 450 tests in our test suite. And we support around 20 Python web frameworks. And also support very old Python 2.7 and then 3.5 until 3.10. And also one of the, those uh, 20 web frameworks is, of course, Django. And we support Django 1.8 and up. So okay, uh, 4.0 uh, for and 4.1 is not quite there yet. I'm sorry for the delay, uh, but we're working on it, but I'm busy doing other stuff. Um, yeah, so all in all, we have seven Python versions to support, times 20 uh, Python web frameworks, times two to nine uh, versions of each of those web frameworks, which means we run our test suite in over 400 environments. And this uh, is pretty big, yeah. And how do we run this? Our, our stack for testing is like a basic, I think that the default stack for everyone, it's like PyTest for running the tests, we have Flag 8, Black and MyPy for um, type checking and linting. Then we use Tox to run our test suite in the different environments. So Tox is the, the main part. It creates virtual environments for each of the Python versions and each of the framework versions, and then runs the PyTest test suite in it. Then uh, we use Make for running tests locally, or make it easier to run our tests locally. And as a CI provider, we use GitHub Actions, where we run all the tests on each uh, pull of a release branch or on each uh, merge into uh, the main branch and also like on each pull request. So when I was uh, submitting this talk in end of May, this is how a test suite looked like in GitHub Actions. And let me zoom into the important part. This was the duration of our test suite. And that's not really fast, and it's not even moderately fast, that's very, very slow. But why did I then submit the talk? Because like, it's very, very, very slow. So my thinking was this. Um, if I submit the talk and it gets accepted, I can represent Sentry, and Sentry likes this. So that's good. But if I uh, come up with 38 uh, minutes of test duration, like it's, it's embarrassing. So, <laughs> and I don't want to embarrass myself in front of you all. And also, like, I don't want to embarrass Sentry. So the thing was, maybe if I submit the talk and it gets accepted, I need to make time to fix the tests. And also, like, it forces my manager to give me time to fix the tests. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so, and also, like, it, it was between 38 and 42 minutes. So and this is very annoying if you like on each release and everyone you have to wait forever. And also the one thing is also like if then the test gets accepted, I can fix the test suite. We have faster tests. It's a win-win for everyone that contributes to the to the project because just every developer's life gets easier with a faster test suite. Um, when I told this to my manager, or when my manager Vladim found out, he coined the term for it. It's conference-driven development, <laughs> basically. And I like the term a lot, so like that's that's it for now. So I'm going to talk to you in this talk about how I, my, my journey from 40 minutes test suite to faster and how fast I get and what I did. So let's do some refactoring. And by the way, uh, all the images in my slides are done by the Stable Diffusion AI. It's like a, it's a Python tool where you type in random stuff, like here, Fernando Pessoa, using a computer, and it paints stuff. And it's like amazing, and I spent way too much time playing around with this, but it's just too amazing to not do. And also, like, Fernando Pessoa is, an, is a Portuguese writer, an amazing writer. You should check him out. So first, the circle of refactoring. Basically, everything is always circles. So first, you have to find ideas how to improve my current situation. Then you pick one of the ideas, and you implement it, and then you measure, uh, has my situation now improved? If not, throw it away. If yes, you can go back to finding new ideas or adapt the ideas you found in the last iteration. And if you look at this, it's not only like this circle of refactoring, basically. It's also good advice for life in general. So it's also kind of the circle of life. So yeah, my first idea was uh, 
I should run the tests in parallel, probably. Because I, I found out that when I run my tests locally, it only uses one CPU, and that's just a stupid idea. Uh, it's, so that's the, the, the basic start I had. On the horizontal line is the time. So we had like this one GitHub runner, and the GitHub runner is like the virtual machine that GitHub actions uh, starts up and runs your workflow in. And in this, we started Tox, and Tox then created a virtual environment for each of our 400 um, uh, test suites and uh, each of our 400 environments and ran the test suite in it, one by one by one. So that's the slowest version you can have, basically. So I thought maybe Tox can run stuff in parallel, and it can. It has a dash dash parallel auto, then it uses uh, the number of CPU cores you have to run the environments in parallel. This already greatly improved the speed. It was like from 40 to 25 minutes, but 25 is still, yeah, not enough. And this was also like when I changed this, our test suite, some of the tests started to fail because if you run tests in sequentially or in parallel, it's different. But I, I implemented this, uh, we released it, and I went on a vacation. So this is also something you should not do. Uh, because some of our tests uh, start up a, a server on a port, and if then the same server is started twice on the same port, it, the tests crash. So my, uh, my colleague Neil, who is also maybe here somewhere, fixed it. Thanks, Neil. Uh, and so uh, here the limiting factor is the CPU cores. In GitHub runners, you only have two CPUs. So that's all you get. So I thought, if I do not get more CPUs, maybe I get more runners. So the next idea, oh, sorry, was to get one runner for each of the environments we have. And for this, I needed to change our uh, GitHub Actions configuration file so that we had one YAML file for defining all those, uh, how to run our test suite. And because I'm a lazy uh, engineer, I wrote a script to like split it up. So on the top left, you see, or on the top right, <laughs> uh, your left, you see the, uh, the Tox configuration file where, def where we define all the Python languages we use and all the frameworks and all the framework versions. And I wrote a script that parses this file and then creates for each framework we have uh, one YAML file uh, for configuring GitHub Actions. And so again, this is what I thought I would get. But in reality, you also have like, not unlimited number of runners you can start. And we have a GitHub Enterprise account, like a big account, and this means you get 180 concurrent uh, runs for the whole organization. So it's not me in Sentry, there are a lot of other bright people that run stuff in CI. So it was more like this. I had five to 10 or maybe 15 concurrent runners, uh, depending on how much all the other people at Sentry do. So this did not uh, improve the time that much. So I thought, uh, maybe I should do something like having the best of both worlds, uh, parallelizing with Tox on the CPU level and on the runners. So I changed my script that creates the, the YAML files to have it like this. Now, um, I start one runner for Django, and in it, I start Tox with uh, all the Django versions, so the test within all the Django versions. And this brought the time down quite a bit. So the result of this all was it saved around 20 to 30 minutes of duration of our test suite. So the next idea then uh, was I can clean up our YAML file. Because when I did the script that creates those YAML files, I noticed some stuff in our YAML file that's just not there anymore, not, not used anymore. Like we have a setup node in there. And I, I don't know why we need a node to run our Python tests, so I deleted it. I also noticed that we spin up two services in all of our test runs. It's Redis and Postgres. And then I did some digging and found that in our code, we do not use this Redis service at all because we have now something that's called fake Redis. It's like an in-memory Redis for testing. So I deleted Redis. And Postgres was only used by the Django tests. None of the other frameworks used it. So I changed again my script that generates the, the config files to only start a Postgres instance on the Django framework with the result, again, two minutes saved. The next thing was uh, I should cache. Uh, I used the cache of GitHub Actions. So in our GitHub Actions, uh, Tox is creating this virtual environment. It's like a directory where it installs 
uh, the dependencies for the tests from PyPy. And between runs, I wanted to, to cache this directory, so it's not installed over and over again. And there's something called Actions Cache in GitHub Actions that lets you do this. But as our dependencies are set up, it could have happened that uh, we installed the dependencies, then they were put in cache, and if meanwhile one of the dependencies updated, uh, our cache would not be invalidated. So we run our tests against the old version of the dependency and not the new one. So long story short, I did not implement it because it could have... Uh, um, yeah, it did not work. So, but I kept the idea for later. Um, the next idea was then, if I cannot use the cache, maybe I can use RAM drives. And RAM drives are basically, you have a directory in your file system, but it's not sitting on the disk, it's sitting in memory. And um, memory is still 50 times faster than disks, also SSDs. And I was thinking, so maybe, I don't know, I was worried that GitHub Actions do not allow me to, to create RAM drives. But it turns out you can do them. On the top left, you see this, uh, I created a directory with this mkdir, and then the sudo mount uh, command. This just assigns a certain number of megabytes in memory to this directory. In this case, 180 uh, megabytes. And on the t uh, bottom right, uh, in our talks in here, I just tell talks to use this directory as work dir and temp dir. And our talks creates the virtual environments not on disk, but in memory, which again sav saved two minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Next idea was a local PyPy server. So still the, the virtual environments are created in memory now, but I still have to download all my dependencies from PyPy and then install them. So we have an internal uh, PyPy server at Sentry. And Anthony Sotil, he joined a couple of months ago. You maybe know him. He's like, he streams a lot of Python content and coding on YouTube and, and Twitch. If you don't know him, Anthony writes code. You can check it out. It's really cool stuff. And he set up this internal PyPy server for speeding up our main monolith repos CI, which is based on Django and other things. On this internal PyPy server, a lot of packages are there, but all the dependencies I needed, like all those ancient Django versions and stuff, are not there. So I could have added them, but for now, it's, I did not implement it, but I kept the idea for later. Time's up. Oh, time's up. Because conference-driven development has a hard time limit. And my time limit was a couple of days ago when uh, DjangoCon wrote me an email and said, hey, DjangoCon is around the corner, uh, let's send us your slides and we can check them for code of conduct. And I was like, I don't have any slides yet. So maybe I stop doing tests refactoring, but start doing the slides. And there's a sad programmer. <laughs> Uh, so as a recap, the, the stuff I considered. So first was, the first idea was like running the tests in parallel. And this took a couple of iterations to get right. It was also the, the main part of the work, but saved the, the most time. Then I cleaned up the YAML files, which is an easy thing to do, and it's like saved also a couple of minutes. The GitHub Actions cache was not able, but I saved it for later. And the RAM drive saved some minutes, and then the PyPy server is also something for later. So as a total result, the number you want to see is now, our tests are now running under seven minutes, and most of the frameworks run in one or two minutes, but only three or four of them, Django included, run six minutes around. And this is also like, Django is our biggest integration, and we have the most tests for that, so, yeah. Also like, splitting up the test suite in, in all those different, uh, like, workflows in GitHub Actions makes it way easier to find the failing tests. Because before, it was like a humongous log of, te uh, of, of test output, and finding the one test that failed was really, really annoying. So this is also like a great result. And I did a conference talk, so you all participate now in. So I think it's a, it's a success all in all, and also Cristiano Ronaldo is with me. Um, yeah, so what is next? We, uh, so I have a, a milestone called Better Test Suite in our project, you can check it out. And all the ideas I had in this talk, I had I put issues in this milestone. And the ideas I did not do are still in this, in this milestone, so you can check it out. And also, if you have like ideas on how to do this even faster and stuff, just create an issue, put it in the milestone. Or maybe I have to put it in the milestone, I don't know. Uh, but just put it there, I, I'm happy to hear your, your thoughts. And I also think, 
being under two minutes should be easily possible if I had 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 more time. But first, we will uh, focus on the Django 4 support because that's long overdue. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, one thing if you do a, like a big refactoring task like this or any big thing uh, is like you don't have to make it good. You just have to make it better than it is now. And I think that's the main thing you should take away from this talk. It's like it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be better than now. And also like iterate. Don't do a million things at, at the same time if you do like a big task like this but just pick small ideas, implement them, test them. If they work, keep them. If they're not, not working, throw them away. And the time boxing thing. Uh, do time boxing, conference-driven development is like, you put yourself a little bit under stress, uh, stress and because you have a fixed time. There's like a real deadline that you need to have something to prepare. Or be prepared, it's not an arbitrary deadline you don't care about, set by some marketing guy or whatever. But it's like something you care about. And also, like, because when I did this, I had to do my day-to-day -day work also. So there's this small um, daily time boxing where you, you cannot uh, restrict the amount of work you do. Basically, you cannot say, I want to do three bug fixes today, or I want to do three performance improvements today, because you don't know how long each performance improvement will take you. But you can restrict the amount of time. You can say, I will do three hours of performance improvements today, and this every day. And this is, in combination with iteration, it just makes, makes uh, the project better, step by step. And I'm a big fan of this baby steps approach thing. Yeah, I think that's all I have for, for me for today. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>